Here's the truth, without a solid bass part, your mix could sound thin and weak. Getting the bass right is vital in creating a track that sounds full and professional. So what's the key to dialing in a tight, solid low end? Compression. In this video, you're going to learn the fast bass compression trick that will instantly make your track sound more professional. And after teaching almost a million people about mixing, I know that a lot of people get this wrong. So keep watching if you struggle with compressing bass and want to learn how to compress bass like a pro. But first, be sure to grab my free bass mixing cheat sheet to make sure you get the bass right every single time. There is a link in the description or a link on screen now. Okay, let's dive right in. From dust to dust, so what's the bass compression trick? Using multiple compressors on one bass part. In most genres, the bass needs to be heavily compressed to provide a solid foundation. So in rock, pop, hip hop, that kind of stuff, obviously we're not referring to like jazz or acoustic here, but anything that's generally processed and needs that foundation, we need compression to achieve that. So if you are working with jazz, something like that, stop watching this video now because you don't need to compress the bass. If you're working in lighter genres, you won't need any compression at all. But if the track calls for it and you want to make your low end more consistent, keep watching. So in those genres, we want every note to be the same volume. And instead of automating it, which we could do, but that'd take ages, we can compress it. It's a much faster way to achieve this. Now, sometimes just one compressor sounds good, but whenever you're aiming for heavy compression, it's best to use what most people would call serial compression. And this is simply the act of compressing the bass at two, three, or maybe even four different points. And normally this would be once or twice on the channel itself, and then maybe again on a bus, and you've probably got some kind of compression on the mix bus too. So this is serial compression, all these different points of compression throughout the mix. And in this case, we're actually gonna go through the acts of applying two compressors to one bass channel. So let's just bypass everything we've got going on here so we can start from scratch. And I'm gonna remove this compressor, remove this compressor, and let's just have a quick listen to the track. So it's quite open, but the bass is playing these long sustained notes. And we really want those notes to kind of fill that gap between the kick drum hits so that it sounds full and it doesn't sound thin and empty between those kick drum hits. So the first thing I'm gonna do is load up a compressor, any will do. I'm just gonna use the stock logic compressor for this. And we're gonna dial in quite a high ratio, four to one. With vocals, stuff that's a bit lighter, you're probably gonna use two to one or less, but with anything rhythmic, like kick, snare, bass, it's good to start around four to one. And then we're gonna get rid of this knee and we're just gonna start by adjusting the threshold until we see around five to 10 dB of gain reduction. Now I'm gonna turn off auto gain because Logic has this annoying feature. And once we've dialed in that gain reduction, we'll increase the makeup gain to compensate. So that sounds about the same volume to me. So the next step is to start tweaking our attack and release time. And we're gonna start with a medium release or an auto release. If you have an auto release button, just use that unless you have a reason to start tweaking the release time. So with the bass, we might actually wanna slow this down quite a lot because they're really long sustained notes. So we can play around that with that in a sec, but let's start with it on auto. And let's just tweak that attack time. I'm gonna start slow and bring this up until we start to notice that the bass is sounding dull and it sounds a bit less aggressive because that means we've gone too far. We're starting to compress that transient. Better to opt for slow tack times whenever in doubt. So let's just start slow and bring that up until we start to notice the bass losing some of its life and then back it off a bit. <laughs> So around there is sounding good. We don't need to spend too long on that. And let's just experiment with a slightly longer release time. 100 is a good place to start for anything that's not too 
fast, like a kick drum or a snare drum that's gonna stop ringing out really quickly. 100 is a good place to start for like bass, guitars, mix bus, anything like that. So we'll start there and then we're gonna tweak to taste. <laughs> Now, what you'll notice is that as that note is ringing out, this needle is slowly going back to zero. And what we wanna try and do with these long sustain notes is get the needle to go back to zero between the notes, but make sure it's not going back too quick because the slower it goes back, the more sustain we're gonna get from the bass because the compressor is just slowly relaxing. And it's kind of going against the note. As the note rings out, the compressor relaxes and increases the volume. So let's tweak that, make sure we're getting back to zero between notes, but also we've got a nice slow release uh, to counteract that note. And that'll do, it's sounding pretty good. So the next step then is to just duplicate this. Before we even think about adding a new compressor and using different settings, a really quick shortcut is to just duplicate it. And let's listen to what that does. So now we've got quite a heavily compressed sound and I'm not sure I'm liking that. So let's back off that threshold a bit because we're using two compressors, we can be a bit subtler with each of them. Again, we want to check it's the same volume, so just play around with these, play around the makeup gain. Let's compare before and after. So we've got two compressors now. This is with them bypassed. Now let's bring them back in. So it sounds quite musical. The bass doesn't sound too compressed. It doesn't sound like it's just been squashed, but we're getting that consistency. The notes are ringing out for longer. We've got a nice solid foundation now to the track. Let's flick back and forth a few times quicker. So you can really hear it in the sustain of that note. Without the compressors, that note just kind of fades out and we lose a lot of that bottom and a lot of that fullness. But with the compressors, that fullness is always there. And if we go to a different section now, let's have a listen to how consistent the bass is. So now that we've got a nice consistent bass, it's gonna be easier to place in the mix. And it's important that you spend lots of time on volume balance at the beginning of your mix, getting a good level. But once we've applied compression, even though we've done our best to volume match it, there is a difference because now every note is more consistent. So before some notes were loud, some were quiet, and we set the level as best we could, but now it's a more consistent level. So we can go back to this volume balance and adjust this fader until the bass is at a good point in the mix. Check some references.
So I think that's a good place. We could come back to that later, but make sure you actually set that fader before you start compressing, before you do anything, but also afterwards, come back and readdress that volume balance because that can have such a huge impact on the mix. And if you find that your mix overall has got too much low end, instead of trying to use EQ or multiband compression, something like that on the mix bus to fix it, you probably just need to turn up or turn down the bass guitar or the kick drum. So always go to volume balancing first. Now that we've got the volume of the low end right, what if we want the bass to cut through the mix a bit more? What if we play around with this fader and we get it to a point where the low end of the track is sounding consistent, it's not overpowering, it sounds like it's gonna translate well on lots of speakers, but the bass guitar plays an important role and we want it to cut through the mix a bit more. Well, that's where saturation comes into it. And instead of boosting with EQ, which you could try, a booster upper mid, something like that, I normally prefer just to add a bit of saturation to help the bass cut through the mix a bit more if it plays an important role. Great free saturation plugin is Klanghelm IVGI. And we're gonna use high frequency response. We're just gonna bring up this drive until we start to notice that the bass cuts through the mix a bit more. So that's definitely helping the bass to cut through, but it's messing up the tone of the low end a bit more. So I'm gonna try a different plugin, uh, another great saturation plugin from FabFilter, because with this, I can only saturate the top end and I can leave that bottom end unsaturated, let's say below 200, and I can just try adding some saturation to this top end. So now we're bringing out that top end a bit more that's gonna cut through the mix and also cut through on smaller speakers. So just a little bonus tip for you there, but don't forget serial compression, using two compressors on your bass is a great way to get a nice consistent, powerful low end without squashing the bass and without sounding over compressed. So that's how you compress a bass guitar, but what about EQ? What about everything else involved in the bass mixing process? Well, I put together a free bass mixing cheat sheet that you can download and use as a reference when you're mixing. And if you really want to learn how to mix bass like a pro and make sure you get the bass right every single time, be sure to grab that free cheat sheet. It's gonna guide you through that process and go deeper into EQ, compression, balancing, everything else involved in mixing bass. So it's completely free. There's a link in the description below or on screen now. And now I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below. Have you ever used serial compression on bass before? Just comment with yes or no. If you've done it before, let me know. If you haven't, comment with a no because I want to see how many people have used this technique. And if you do give it a try, let me know in the comments below how you find it too. So that's all from me. I'll see you same time, same place next week. And remember, create regardless.